How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now, hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas! It's practically here! Then he growled, with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew. All the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, noise, noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, the noise, noise, noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast. And they'd feast, feast, feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, sing, sing. <laughs> And the more Grinch thought of this Who Christmas scene, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? And then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. 
and the Grinch looked around, but since the reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No! The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he grabbed his dog, Max. Then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue, where the little who's stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates and drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. He stuffed them in bags and the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimbley. Then he slunk to the icebox. And he took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their very last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch. I will stuff up the tree! And the Grinch grabbed the tree and started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter, who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie. And he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there. Then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her on her head and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was a log for their fire. 
Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire, and then one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who mouses. You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. You have termites in your smile. You have all the tender sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Given the choice between the two of you, I'd take the, um, seasick crocodile. Mr. Grinch, you're the king of sinful sots. You're a hearts of dead tomato clutched with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. You're a three-decker sauerkraut and toadstool sandwich with arsenic sauce. It was a quarter past dawn, all the who's still in bed. All the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, and the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's. He was graciously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. And then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry Boo! Hey! That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, and it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound was sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was Mary, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came! Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages. 
boxes or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't quite feel so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast.